Okay, so now we're recording, so let's behave. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, uh, peace upon you all. You, and, uh, you were so worried. Yeah, so what do you guys want to talk about today? We can talk about Islam history or miracles in the Quran. Uh, those are the two topics that are, you know, centralized around, but we can talk about other things if uh, anyone has any question. Uh, so it's dash open discussion. Um, so yeah, um, let's talk about Islam history. If you think, or like, what do you think about it? Uh, for me, it's a, I don't. For me, it's very straightforward. Uh, I believe the oldest Quran, uh, the Birmingham Birmingham manuscript, right? Uh, it was written during the Prophet time. Uh, I don't believe in diacritics, so I don't believe diacritics changes the word meaning just the sound like tomato tomatoes and uh yeah that's about it really any other takes um, um no yes um so i also don't believe the arabic that was uh that is used by uh Sahih Hadith is the same Arabic the Quran uses. Um, I think that's very important important because when you look at like uh, how God uses a word in the Quran, right? The style is very different, or how it's being compared to other words, right? Um, I I haven't found any poetry that existed before the Quran or during the Quran time, like Arabic poetry that could give us definition of words. So, you know, the word Salah, does it mean ritual prayer or something else? Uh, zakat, Hajj, Siyam, etc. Yeah. Yeah. So. Come on, guys, help me out here. <laughs> um. Okay, Life, do you want to talk about anything? Do you have anything to say about that? All right. <laughs> I th thank you again for the spotlight. No, I have nothing, but I'll I'll go with any topic you want. So, you want to talk about the Arabic language? We can go there. You want to talk about the dialect, uh, the Quran? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm happy. I'm 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 happy with any topic. Take your topic and we'll go. Let's go with diacritics. What's your take on that? I mean, I I think it's very simplistic. It's 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 very straightforward. You know, the Quran exists in the same language that we you know, we, we find was revealed 1400 years ago. Uh, some changes have happened to the language, but they're very minor changes. So when you talk about, you know, Shedda, or Fatha, or Dhamma, the dots, and, and it, it's minor changes. They're not big changes. The language is very distinct. The language is very detailed. Um, if you remember a few days ago when we were talking about uh, when when uh, Abraham says, "My Lord, I have resided part of my progeny um, near your restricted shrine," and then it says, "Liuqimu salat," and we we focus on "liuqimu" means more than two, because if it was two people, i.e., Hajar and her son, it would have said "liuqima." And we, we clearly interpreted liuqimu means there were three or more people. So who were they or who, who was, you know, who were the people that were deposited at the Kaaba? It's definitely more than two people. It could have been Hajar and her son and the servants or Hajar and her son and a crowd or Hajar on, and, and her son or even not even Hajar. It, it could have been, um, and I think we mentioned Lut. We said Lut was from his progeny. So the, the Arabic language is very detailed, very specific, and it really gives you an understanding that the traditionalists don't commonly carry. They have a different interpretation. You know, they, they want to run, run after their own interpretation. So that, that's one thing I can say about the language and, and the linguistics. I don't know, I feel like uh, they play around too much, like even with the non-Arab speaker, right? The Arabs would say, oh, you know, this this word is pronounced that way, so it's, it has a different meaning, you know, like, but why would we go, why would we go there when we can just, 
you know the word has a root right and the root is uh, you know like uh, like salam for example say sin la mim right it's centralized around the concept of peace so why do we change the definition in some ayat why would we go there when we can just make it you know aslam to rabbil alamin i am at peace with the god right you know that's how i define that why would we go like oh i submit to god uh, you know, submission is part but, of it. But actually, but... actually, salama is to surrender more than peace. Surrender. I, I don't know why you, you, you said peace. I think salama... Because when you say... You know, someone, some, yeah. When you say someone surrendered, you say istaslam. Istaslam means he surrendered. That is true. I'm, I'm using the, the common language. So yeah. salama is closer to submission or surrender than peace. I, I don't like the word peace. I think the word peace is a bit strange. Um, I, and, and I get it. It's a derivative, salam. Yeah, salam alaikum. But the you word... don't say submission upon yeah, yeah, yeah. you or yes, surrender yes, yes, upon yes. you. Peace. You say peace upon you. I, 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 I get, I get what you're saying. But I think the word submission carries more weight in, in that word or in its derivatives than um, surrender. Yeah. Think... Oh, sorry, than peace. I, I think peace is a bit strange. You think peace? Can I, can I say something? This oh, is Omar Ramah. Go ahead. You know, uh, if if we, uh, I mean, this is a very interesting, of course, uh, thought. Uh, Islam, where does it come from? The root, uh, because the the origin, the root, it can be either a verb or a noun. So there's no no clear cut what on 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 the assumption that the root is always a verb, the past tense, but. If we were to take submission as uh, as uh, the meaning or the or the background behind Islam, submission in what sense? I'm curious. Uh, Allah gave us the freedom, so this contradicts the concept of freedom. I mean, you have a, a, a someone who works for you, let's say a servant <laughs> or a slave, let's say. Uh, who submits to your submits to you in what sense and to your commands, right? You say something that person should do it. So how can we uh, and uh, have this this interpretation in light of the fact that Allah gives us the freedom to do whatever we want? Uh, I I I I. I I'm tilting towards that Islam comes from Salam. Uh, the, the, the two key concepts, the, the two key concepts in the religion of Muhammad, the, the, the messenger, Iman and Islam. And if, if you think about what, what do people around the world aspire to have? Peace and security, isn't it? Nice. These are the two most important concepts. Anyways. Yeah, and this Please. is where Iman comes in. Sorry for cutting you. Um, because Iman means security, right? What is it? right? When you feel secure. Uh, and the mu'mins are people who are secure with uh, with God. Or like, you know, once they, they're, the Iman enters their heart, when security, when they hear the words of God, uh, when the Quran is recited about on them, their security increases, not their faith or belief. Yeah, and 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 I I I, you know, because Allah says Aminu Billah, there's a ba, right? You see, th there's iman and there's uh, aqidah, yataqid, uh, to 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 what is translated in English as belief. I, I, I cannot, I'm not comfortable with the, with the translation of Iman as belief. Aminu B. It's always B. Aminu Billah. In other words, we're using Allah to achieve security. That's how I look at it. Why would Allah use, put the letter B, Ba, Ba is ba il wasila in Arabic. It's the the ba that it's to achieve something. Uh, you know, yadhab al walad 
بالسيارة The boy goes let's say إلى المدرسة to the school بالسيارة via the car using the car now this is something that is is for some strange reason is overlooked by Arab linguists I don't know why you know <laughs> so 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 at the end of the day really at the end of the day is security and peace is what what is 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 the 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 I think the two key concepts in in this in in the religion security and peace and it makes sense when when Allah says man qatala mu'minan you know whoever kills a mu'min a mu'min without any justification as if he killed a uh, humankind I don't think Allah is referring to the person who believed that Muhammad is a prophet it doesn't make sense so in other words I can kill uh, someone who does not believe uh, Muhammad is a prophet and I am I'm fine I get away with it or 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 the or the calculus is completely different from killing someone who just uttered quote unquote the shahada and someone who did not utter it while the other person <laughs> is 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 not hurting anyone living calmly peacefully it, it doesn't make sense so I think we really have to re revise our <laughs> rethink what iman means yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I agree with you and i i think iman translating iman as belief is a very weak uh, translation because also like the shaitan right he believes right uh, uh, chapter 59 verse 16 it says mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like satan who says to men do not believe but when men disbelieve uh, satan says I disown you. I fear God, Lord of the words. So he even believes in God, right? But God never calls him a mu'min in that sense. He never gave him that yeah. He never gave him that title because mu'mins, there's an action for the mu'mins, you know, in chapter 23 or 24. Um, uh, I gotta pull that up. But uh, while I pull that up, uh, Ahmed Tim, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, w I would say you could say you صدق or, or يعرف You know, in terms of belief You صدق or يعرف You want to extend on that? Do you want to give like an example? Because uh, it's, the, it's, it's, it's the word belief in relation to faith uh, I think it is something that is unjustified, whereas you صدق or يعرف uh, is more justified and uh, it's a conclusion that someone comes to through, through reasoning and logic. Reasoning and logic. You صدق or يعرف. I guess it could go hands in hand because like if you know something and you're you know accept it I guess you're at peace with it or if you secure with it too right uh, yeah yeah so sadaq in terms of la sadaq wa la salla la kun kadaba wa tawalla and ya'raf in terms of alam ya'raf bi anna Allah yara Oh, does he not know the God sees? Yeah. The, you know, the, the very interesting, uh, the, if you notice that Sadaqa, uh, I, I really don't think that Sadaqa is, is close to, to Iman uh, by going back to the Mus'haf. But the verse that you mentioned is, is uh, gives light on this. Another ver uh, notice that it is, it is as if it counters Kadib. Notice, uh, there's I, another I, one. I, I, I wasn't referring to Iman, I, was, I okay. was conferring what you said because I, I agree with you and okay. I was, I was uh, bringing them to belief, the word belief, yes. rather and, and, than uh, Iman. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I wanted to add the, the verse وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلِيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلِيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ so, 
it, 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 as if Sadiq is the opposite of Kibib. Mm. You see? Sadaqa uh, 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 to validate, uh, that's how I look at it. Kibib is to deny, not kufr, but but to to or to disvalidate, perhaps. Yeah, kufr is more like it, when you hide something, right? Like, exactly, exactly. You you hide a fact. Yeah. But well, but Kibib is. God hides their misdeeds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but then, how do you translate sadaqa? In the sadaqa lil fuqara wa masakin and etc. etc. That, that, that really gets me because there it would be considered charity. And I'm just like. That's sadaqat. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not sadaq, it's sadaqat, it's something different, right? Well, but the roots are the same. This is like one of. It, it, yeah. Yeah, they could they, they they could have common root, but the meaning is 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 different. I mean, obviously, sadaqat uh, al-fuqara wal masakin. You know, it, it's we're talking about something. According different. to that context, it has to be charity, like it's locked, right? Like it's no way out of that. It, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone wants to say something? Life. Um. <clears throat> I'm 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 good with this discussion. I'm I'm just listening. So look, again, you can interpret it the way you want. Um, is Islam submission, or is it peace? The verses I find they're submission. It's not peace. You know, I, I don't know where this peace peace comes from. This this is coming from some hippie movement that suddenly has Muslims. <laughs> hey, hey, movement, watch it. <laughs> They're very peaceful and, you know, and they should, they should be sending out flowers. They submit to God, but they're very, you know, Islam is a very powerful religion. It's, it's not a hippie religion. It's not a peaceful religion. Uh, if you push me, I push you back. If you attack me, I attack you back. Of course. That's not peace, huh? No, yeah, that's so, not submission. what it teaches. It teaches you uh, if you get attacked, you defend. The minute they exactly. stop, you have to stop. You need to exactly. say that correctly. No, 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 but that's not a pacifist religion. It's not a Gandhi religion. This is not Gandhiism. This is not uh, Hinduism. It's not even it's a not... religion. It's a way to live your life. That's another it's falsity. A it's, a it's a system. No, it's a system. It's not a way of life. It's a system. So if you slap me, I don't turn the other cheek. I don't know where that comes from. But if you slap me, I will slap you back. That's and if Bible. you push me out, where, where? No, no, hold on. This is important. It if comes you push from the me Quran. Out... What do you mean you don't know where guys, it comes guys, from? Guys, just, just, just before you get very defensive. If you push me out from where I am residing, I have the right, according to the Quran, yes. not just to push back, but to regain the territory that you pushed me out from. That's, that's, a, that's not a pacifist approach. That's a very aggressive approach. So I'm, I'm not into this, uh, you know, Islam is turn the other cheek. It's not turn the other cheek. It's, it's actually stand your ground. Mm -hmm. You know, do not run away from, from, from battles uh, because you're fearful. You know, hold hold the line, hold your ground, and stand up for what, what, what you believe in. That's what Islam teaches. It doesn't teach pacifism. So, but, but you see, mm, go ahead, Omar. You see, pacifism is one thing, and a pacifist religion is one thing, and a peaceful religion is another thing. So the two things are different. So so I don't think that we are debating anything to to look good or to look bad I, I i at least i am not okay it's not a matter of 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 debating anything in light of who's listening to us that's not uh, my my philosophy we want to understand the text we want to make sure we understand the text that's that's very critical and uh, and uh, 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 when you said we respond to someone uh, who did who committed an offense, that's not very aggressive response. That's a just response. Okay, so there's a justice here. This justice, before uh, the message of Muhammad came, was alien to people. Was alien. Unfortunately, we know that right now, not to pick on Pakistan. I mean, I have, of course, 
But in Pakistan, if someone commits some offense, they go and rape many women from that village. So <laughs> that's where Islam came from, to make it very precise form of justice, not more, not less. Okay, so does that classify to be a very aggressive response? No, it's a just response. Okay, so so peace, peace is peace and security. We're going back. It's not a matter of being apologetic. It's a matter of understanding the text. Peace and security, wherever you go around the world, these are the two ultimate things that everybody wants. Peace and security. And it is not a, a coincidence that we have two concepts in this religion, aside, of course, from the duality of batil and haqq. The two concepts that I'm referring to is Iman and Islam. Hmm. Yeah, and there is also that verse where it says, you know, you can forgive, right? Like, yeah, you can uh, take back your territory, which... which, which that's what we ought to do, right? But then there are circumstances where you can just like, forgive and like whatever, man, it's just, it, it, you know, if it's something small or not that big. But when it comes to submission, I think the best word is sujood, you know? Uh, uh, like, <clears throat> you can, uh, one verse, uh, chapter 32, verse 15, that says, Only those who are mu'min in our verses, who, when they are reminded of by them, they fall in sujudan. Right, and a lot of people will say, "Oh, well, that's submission right there." Right, you're you're submitting, and when mm. the Quran is recited to them, do they not yajjudun? Right, do they not submit to the ayat, to the verses? Right, and it's usually contrasted with arrogance, uh, istigbar. Right, like when God told the uh, iblis to bow down to do shujud, and he said no, he was, he became arrogant. So I think those are the two contracts, if anyone, you know, unless if someone disagrees, please. Uh, but yeah, and actually that's a good question. Is Iblis, was he an angel, or like a fallen angel, or a different entity than Malaika? Do, do you know, it's interesting, uh, now that you change the subject to, to, to Iblis and then, uh, you know, the, the concept of angels, uh, a lot of our understanding of the concept of angel came from hadith, not not from the mushaf. You see, uh, which 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 something we really should think about carefully. With uh, qala rabbukil malaikati, when Allah addressed the malaika, so uh, it, 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 to me, yes, he was one of the malaika, but. Does that mean the malaika are were were strictly creatures who just uh, obey? Uh, you know the Quranic, the Mushafic text tells me otherwise. You know. Um, that's interesting because yeah, I do believe I, when I read the Quran, I read read the Quran, I still have this like angels, you know, the Sunni definition of angels, or at least Judaism, Christianity and Islam, or Sunni as a uh, definition of angel. But I always thought they were a different entity because when God says, you know, I'm going to create a Bashar, and they're like, are you going to create those who spell blood and uh, uh, corrupt the earth while we serve you? So it seems like they had some sort of uh, conscious and uh, they could retaliate against God's command or like question it not retaliate but question it right because like if you have the audacity to ask God or your boss or your supervisor hey why are you gonna do this like hey you don't question that because he's your supervisor for a reason he has experience years of experience unless if you're like you know just curious why is he doing that but the tone of how they ask that question kind of shows that they had this free will kind of thing but that, that's a good point uh, because uh, I'm referring to the verse with and if we we declared promulgated to the malaika uh, make submission as you do 
لآدم irrespective of what as judo means here but it's a it's a it's a request a request a command لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس they have fulfilled the request إلا إبليس so this goes to your point is that definitely one of them did not do what Allah asked him ask them to do and when you say I give you uh, uh, the apples إلا uh, <laughs> one of them which had a, let's say which was defective clearly I'm excluding something from the set a class of apples that I gave you you know so it, it, the, the, if we will stick to the text I think it's very revealing of course if we insert hadith then you have then then we're going nowhere but this is an example where if we stick to the text we find that Iblis was one of the malaika yeah okay so <laughs> right? right just yeah. lo logically because if we don't believe in this logic then then uh, many other interpretations of the of the mushaf fall apart exactly right? I, I okay. yes i agree with that uh, before i make another point does anyone wants to jump in and say something i mean i'll jump in and i say i, I disagree with that that's completely <laughs> false that that makes no sense i love it because what can i mean <laughs> وَكَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ So Iblis identifies himself as the jinn. وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ in the Qur'an يُفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They are, they, they follow their commands. So the minute you say, oh, but you know, you had this rebellious jinn or rebellious malaika who decided on that day, you know, that Sunday morning that, you know what, I'm actually not going to follow God. That, that makes no sense. You know, he is not a malaika and he's already identified as a jinn. Now, if we say, that he's not a malaika, which I, I believe he's not, and we say he's a jinn, you have to ask yourself, why was he there? What was he doing amongst the group? You know, the, the conversation, and, and I agree with this, the conversation is to the malaika. This, this, this idiot happened to be amongst them, and, and he responded. Um, does that make him, by virtue of, of, of the conversation, a malaika? No, it doesn't, because the malaika do not disobey their command they cannot they just program not to so if you had a robot and that robot could not disobey its 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 commands you can't say oh it disobeyed and it became a jinn it didn't become a, it was always a jinn so you know that individual or that that thing was a jinn he happened to be listening or or present when the malaika received their instructions and he said i'm not gonna submit to him you know he's from he's from clay i'm from fire I'm better than him. So no, I, I don't see that, that Satan was ever a malaika. I think this Christian uh, view of fallen angel is complete crap, makes no sense. You know, the Quran says he was a jinn. I think he was a jinn, always was a jinn. Uh, he just happened to be in the place and time where the command was given and he heard it and he responded. But, but again, you have to think, what were the jinn doing? You know, the jinn said, inna la masna sama'a yeah, there, were, there, there are many verses that say that the jinn were listening in yes. on the upper or the outer heavens. Sure. They admit very clearly we were able to travel space. We were able to listen. We were able to be part of the greater cosmos. Why does that not tell you that the jinn, Satan, specifically, was in the outer heavens. He happened to be where the, 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 the malaika were. He listened to the command of God. And he said, oh, hold on. I don't agree with that. It doesn't make him an angel. It just makes him a jinn. So, no, I, I don't agree with this at all. Yeah, sure. You see, the, the, the problem with this analysis that you just said is that, of course, we can, we can believe whatever we want, right? We, we don't have to believe in the whole text of the Quran if we wish. But if we want to be logical and stick to the text, and we read the verse, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ So Allah is declaring, promulgating to the malaika, not to any stand, anyone who's standing by. Okay, so this is very clear. إِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ So if Allah is addressing a certain class of creatures, okay, he is not addressing others. So if someone is standing next to them, he is not being addressed. 
Now, إذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن. سي ففسق عن أمر ربه. فسق عن أمر ربه. So the أمر was directed to him as well. Otherwise, otherwise, the فسق will be null and void. You see? أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء to the rest of the verse. So the question is we can believe whatever we want. But this is the text. We want to understand the text in a logical way. Not to juxtapose other, other narratives that are not in the text. Yeah, and there is also that verse in chapter 7, where, uh, verse 12, where it says, قال ما, من, ما منعك إلا تسجد إذ أمرتك قال أنا exactly. خير منه خلقني, خلقني من النار وخلقته من التين um, True. Yeah. And maybe, okay, maybe a, a, a jinn is a malaika plus disobe disobedience of God So if you do these two th if you're a, a malaika species and you disobey God, you become a, a jinn. Maybe we can say something like that. Like there's some sort of a ingredient of what is a jinn, and it's composed of being an angel or malaika, right? Uh, that's one one th one way I see it. Another way is it's kind of like animals and humans. So when God co commands animals uh, to submit to Adam, for example, uh, that also includes humans. But if the and since all humans are animals, so God is talking to humans indirectly, or you know they're included in the group. But when all you know the cats and the dogs and the camels they bow down except for the humans, then God said, "Oh, this human became a jinn. Uh, yeah, this malaika becomes a jinn because now he's just you know an animal plus disobedience of God, something like that." Um, that's the way I see it, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can flip that and say, look, if if you say that when he addresses, he addresses the higher beings, and by default, it also encompasses the lower beings. It answers your question. So if you say he addressed the malaika, but it covers everyone else, so al jibal, wal ard, wal samawat, wal jinn, they're all encompassed because you know you you have to remember in the aradna samawat wal in the aradna al amanata, ala samawat wal ard. We offered the trust to the mountains and the heavens and, and they refused to, to carry it. So when you speak of a species and you use the highest species, it by default covers the rest. Does it mean when, when the human accepted the amana, the trust, that the mountains and, and the sky and they still had validity or they still had a claim over it? They didn't. Of course they didn't. Because you already said, I will take it. This is my responsibility. It's the same thing. If he addressed the angels, the higher beings, by default, he's addressing everyone else, including the mountains and the skies and the winds and, and all the things that, that, that can serve man. So it doesn't, to me, again, this is my, my interpretation. It doesn't make the jinn angels because I don't think the angels can fall. I don't think the angels can change their form. I don't think they can disobey because they've been told, we've been told they do not disobey what they've said. Otherwise, what's the point of telling me that first? Why does he say, and they do not, you know, uh, they do not disobey any command that they're given? Why t Why say that verse? And I say, oh yeah, but if they disobey, by the way, they become jinn and they get uh, downgraded to some strange Christian uh, right. belief, which is, you know, uh, a fallen angel. That, this is such rubbish. It just but, but makes I, no I sense. Can, but we can jinn or jinn. We can push back and say mu'mins do not disobey God's command, but there are verses in the Quran where mu'mins disobey God's command. And God's uh, command. Where where does it say mu'mins do not disobey? There's no verse in the Quran. A mu'min can be a kafir. You can be fa'amana, fa kafara, fa, fa uh, sorry, fa'amana, right. fa kafara, fa'amana, fa kafara. You have that. You can be a kafir just because you're a mu'min doesn't mean you but the malaika very clearly stated that they cannot disobey or do not disobey God. I, I can give give me a moment. I'll give you the verse. Cool, but like a good example of a mu'min who disobeyed God is Ibrahim. When God told him, "Do not, you know, pray for your father," but he did it out of love. And Noah did the same thing. You know, he's like, "Can you save my family?" But his son, you know, uh, uh, transgressed, and he prayed for him or something like that. Uh, Muhammad is also a good example. Again, look, you're giving me the example of humans. I, I think humans are irrelevant. 
But yeah, th- but those are examples of moments when God told Muhammad, hey, uh, marry the wife uh, of Zay- Zayda, your stepson, right? Your stepson, ex-wife, marry her. And he didn't, he was reluctant because he feared people. So here you have an example of a moment, Muhammad, who didn't obey because he feared people over God. Stuff like that. Okay, so it's Surah Tahrim. I don't know what, what the number of the verse is, uh, the Surah, verse 6. يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائة غلاب تدادا لا يعصون أمر لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يأمرون. So you you there's no verse that says that of the believers. It doesn't say the believers will not disobey any command that they're given or they will never disobey. But it, it clearly says to the ملائكة. Okay, you got me. Uh, that they do, yeah, they do not disobey what God has ordered them. So you can't say, oh, they can disobey, but then they get transformed into jinn. It, it's it's just it's just a nonsense. It, it doesn't make sense. All right, all right, all right. Um, I think we beat it this topic. Uh, let's move on to something else. Um, okay, let's let's move on. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> right. move, on. Move, move on. Move on. Move um, on. Oh, unless if someone has to say something new, like three. To... Yeah, okay, can I say something? Oh, I was... <laughs> All right. All right. Omar than Ahmed. Okay. Omar. I just want to think that there should be a decorum of respect. I mean, we, we I mean, I, I thought that this group will respect the opinions of others and oh, not course, to label it as, as rubbish or crap. I, I think this is offensive to all of us. Uh, th- this, is, this is the kind of bullying that I talked about in my book. Uh, extensively. We, we should respect each other. I think we should carefully choose our words. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it will disintegrate. No, no, no. This is... Actually, this group, we have a lot of different beliefs. Like, Laith believe in ritual prayers, or he believes that Al-Salah means ritual prayer, at least that, right? Like, a specific. And we all actually very different from each other. And But maybe sometime it could get a little out of hand. Sorry if that's, that happened. Armad, Armad, I, I, think, I think you took my language. Uh, <laughs> I think so too. That, that was never intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you and I have never spoken. I don't know you, you don't know me. Um, I apologize for my language. It's actually not offensive. It's not designed to be offensive. I will try to stay on, on mute as much as I can tonight. <laughs> no. So I don't offend anyone. No, no, I, I, I will. But it's not offensive, Armad. And, and I never meant... To disrespect anyone's opinions no. i'm just saying look if we're going to talk about facts and verses and use the quran let's talk about facts and verses in the quran we shouldn't hide verses which say that you know the malaika cannot disobey god and say no no but but they can and they become a jinn and then if someone objects we call him offensive i'm not being offensive my objective is not to be offensive and again i i will ask anyone here who can moderate this group please mute me or delete me no, if well, I'm being offensive, no, no, I will not, not be offensive. I think it's just no, no, just just to be clear, I will not be offensive, and I apologize, Omar. Uh, not intended, and again, I, I think it's it's a little bit of a stylish issue. You know, we've never spoken, but it, it is a style, and I do apologize for that style. It's the Arab within us. <laughs> so good, man. Ahmed Tim, you wanted to say something? Well, uh, I've kind of got a question, and I'm I can offer perspective uh, that I hold uh, and for me it fits I don't know if it's, if it's going to fit for anyone else yeah go ahead sure Ahmed did we lose you I think we might have lost him yes I've not got the verse in front of me, so I might, if uh, if I go off course, I might ask for some help. But uh, I see the malaika as uh, like the laws that govern uh, reality uh, that we can uh, interact with in order to achieve mastery in life. And uh, the way I see this verse is it's possible that one of these laws didn't work for us so well. And uh, that, for me personally, I see it as a part of, uh, like, uh, imagination. So when we talk about it, it became part of the jinn, like imagination, 
or something that affects our emotions and thoughts and might cloud our judgment. Uh, so before people were around, like thinking person, uh, maybe this part of reality was was uh, helpful to Allah's creation. It was subservient. However, with uh, mankind, because he was able to do this uh, thing with uh, giving the to give the malaik the ism of something. Uh, that uh, that that part of the imagination, uh, that part of the reality, that uh, inter- that that is, in- I th- I feel we interact through our imagination or uh, our uh, our psyche, so to speak. Uh, this is what can, you know, this is what is not subservient to us or can become non-subservient to us. Um, interesting. That's the first time I hear that take. Actually. Was that a bit far? Uh, <laughs> oh, did it make sense at all? First time, when you hear something the first time, it doesn't make sense. You're like, oh, that's interesting, right? Like, even in school, when you learn about like, you know, uh, chemistry or physics, the first time the teacher says something to you new, it's like, huh. So. Yeah, feel free to call it stupid later or crap. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. So before we change topic or go somewhere else, uh, does anyone has any question? Please ask questions. <laughs> Come on, guys, don't be shy. Um. So, so I think l- l- Omar, if you can jump in with with some of your views, because. Uh, I would love to know what you're thinking. Uh, again, you got offended by some of the things that were said, and I do okay. apologize for that. Sure. But what are your views? No, no, and no, let's no. listen to that, and we'll take it. No, no, I, 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 I've been, I've been in the heat of it since I was 16 years old, and I'm about to be 60 soon. So I'm not offended by ideas. I'm not offended by thoughts. I'm not offended by questions. I'm not offended by someone who says I don't believe the whole book. Sorry, I'm not offended, but I just pointed out, I want to be very precise and clear to not to label things, sorry, not to label things as rubbish and crap. That's all. That's all. That's all. Because, I mean, this is a a, a, a group of, of people who are learned and very interested in understanding the most important text that Allah has uh, revealed. Having said that, but but no, no big deal, Just just clarification. Um, there are two verses, you see, I grew up to learn that malaika are something. And this something came mostly from hadith. Okay, this image of what malaika is all about. And that's why the, 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 this, this, this uh, struggle to understand the verse that has Iblis in it. There's always a struggle. You look at uh, five tafasir and you find six opinions. I mean, this is this is classic, very very classic. It had been going on since uh, since since the revelation, as far as I know, from the from the literature that has arrived to us. And till now, there's a lot of debate about it. But I think that the image of who the malaika are had been had been constructed based on narratives that are suspicious. Okay, that's number one. If we look at the text, the Quran, and try to understand it based first on logic rather than faith, first logic, without logic we cannot go anywhere. I mean, if we if we if we, if we say wow means aw, I mean we're not going anywhere, right? If we say la means uh, <laughs> so, anyways, Allah says, yeah, I, I think Surah Al-Tahrim, yeah, ayuha ladina amanu. Um, uh, I'm not going to translate all but just the relevant part. Yeah, the Allah is talking about a malaika, غلاب, a specific subset. He does not res- he he is talking about certain creatures that do not 
uh, 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 disob uh, disobey what he asked them to do. Okay, so he is. There's no generality here. Now, for fairness, we have to look at An Nahl, 1650. Okay, uh, this is another context where let, let's read the verse. Uh, I'm going to read the two verses for fairness, 50 and 49. We have to look at the context. وَلِلَّهِ يَسْجُدُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ دَابَّةِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ To Allah يَسْجُدُ Whatever is in the heavens and uh, uh, whatever ما في السماوات Whatever in the heavens and the earth From دَابَّةِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ دَابَّةِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ دَابَّةِ could be whatever walks on earth, let's say uh, but I don't know. I, I'm not very 100% comfortable with this because Allah refers to a samawat. But let's say, let's move on. The next verse is relevant to our discussion. Okay, now. If we were to take the Dhamir, the, the pronoun is referring to the Dabba wal Malaika, that's interesting, right? Because it means that the Dabba wal Malaika, they fear Allah and they do whatever they were commanded to do. Okay, so these are the two verses that one has to look carefully at to come to the conclusion that are the malaika creatures who will who do not disobey or not okay so it's it's an open question that we need to look at it further okay and i think that these two verses looking at them in their context in the broader context and i don't have i haven't researched this yet okay uh, to look at, at uh, am I correct in referring to the pronouns to Dabba wal Malaika or not? Maybe the pronoun uh, refers to something that preceded uh, these two verses, okay? So anyways, that's all I want to say for now as far as this. But again, don't, 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 uh, let's not underestimate the importance of this question. The Mufassirin haven't answered it. Uh, the contemporaries are still struggling with it. Okay, and hopefully in the future we can look at it more and share our thoughts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's like you know there are many verses in the Quran where different people would read the same verse and they have like different interpretation, right? Different perspective because we come from different backgrounds and stuff. And God says it in the Quran like we created you in different colors and languages so you may learn about each other, not to kill each other and divide. And, and... <laughs> So can I say something about, you said something very interesting, you know, you, I think you meant to say, that, or you translated, خلقناكم شعوما وقبائلا لتعارفوا, am I correct? Yes. إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. May, may I elaborate on this, or is of it course, changing please. the subject? No, no, change the subject, open dialogue. Versus okay. what? No, th this is a very, very important verse, and I really, Allah says تعارفوا, not لتعارفوا. Ta'arof is different from ta'araf, ya'raf, ta'araf. It's on the scale of tafadul, okay? Tafa'ul. Now, I thought a lot about this, but one time a non-Arab came to me and this non-Arab used in their culture, used the word ta'araf, okay? Uh, later, I found out that this word ta'aruf is used in not just in the culture of that person, non-Arab, but in a broader, in, in, a, in, in, in other cultures, okay? And he made me think deeply about it. He said, does ta'aruf mean ta'araf? And I thought about it. Allah created us of different colors and species and all of that so that we mingle and know each other. Really, it, it didn't click to me. Mm. But if 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 when we look back at the word ta'arafu from ta'araf, okay, and we look at and this is a system that I use, it helps me a lot. The conclusion 
the, the last sentence of the verse sheds light on the, what came before it. For instance, in the case of uh, Nikalen, you know, to prove that there's no chopping of hands. Nikalen means to to distance someone. So it it helps to understand what what comes before it. So in this here, شلون لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. So before we go to ta'aruf, the 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 goal is to become akram, to to reach a high level of karam. And karam is nobility, is high level of mannerism, good mannerism, not not generosity. This is what typically, uh, uh, traditionally, karam had been understood in the in the Arab speaking world. Karam means you're generous, karim. But in the Quran, no, it is nobility. It's a high level of behavior. So the objective of the ta'aruf is to reach higher level of is to reach a high level of taqwa. So back to ta'aruf, if we look at it as on the scale of ta'aruf, it means to interact with each other. Interact. Through the interaction, we take the best from other cultures. That's my interpretation of it. Not to get to know of course, there is a connection between the two, but the key is to engage with other cultures so that we take the best. And it really makes a lot of sense. You know, I go to, to, to Japan, for instance. I find them, they're incredibly a culture of, of honesty, cleanliness. So I take something from there. I go to another culture and vice versa. So anyways, this is my take on this very, very important uh, verse. That's actually beautiful. And uh, mentioning Japan, like, you know, they're most, mostly like peaceful, calm people. Like they're very, you know, the feminine, if you want to use that word. Some people say that, like the way, you know, they talk and interact with each other. Um, but it actually it and it synchronized very well with chapter 39 verse 18 which says who listens to the speech and follow the best of it those are the ones god guided and those are people of understanding so nice interesting um, okay um i like how like when two verses you know you just click with each other and different chapters it's beautiful. Yeah. And, 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 and Allah says in the Quran clearly, you cannot find contradiction in this revelation. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. They can't be contradiction. They can't be contradiction. So we have to kind of... Yeah. And God says also the Quran is mubin. It's clear. I think uh, I might be wrong there. But uh, some people have different understanding of the word mubin. But for me right now, it's clear. And what I say is, well, it must be my brain that is not clear. That's all muddy and fogged up with all the Sunniism and all the Christianity and you know so there has to be I, I somehow we have to detox ourselves to see the 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 Mubin right the clarity of the Quran yes absolutely that's a very good point to detox detox yes very very brilliantly said it, it is uh, I you know in my conversation with so many people it's it's that's the toughest uh, challenge you know, is to detox. Absolutely. There's so much clutter, right? Yep. I think Kevin Seven wanted to say something. Uh, I just wanted to say, oh, what do you mean by no contradiction? Like, does it mean within the book itself? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, l l l uh, within the book, there's no contradiction because Allah says, uh, I'll remember to remember uh, look for the verse لو كان من غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا you see if it were not from Allah then there will be a lot of contradictions in it yeah so that's interesting that it says uh, a lot right and not no um, I think that could be because like Someone could like find a contradiction, but it just may be their lack of understanding of the verse. So Allah says a lot because he knows not everyone will understand every verse perfectly. That makes sense. 
there is none, but someone might find one, but it's just a lack of understanding. What do you guys think? Well, you know, the, traditionally, if I may say, traditionally, uh, the the when when, when a, a contradiction appears to someone who is not aware of the mushaf or not willing to spend enough energy in the mushaf or hates the mushaf or hates Muslims or whatever we don't know, they would reconcile this contradiction by. The, by the claim that the hadith came to clarify the mushaf okay so in other words dismiss the mushaf we cannot understand it there could be all kind of things in it let's go to to the hadith that had been classically the way the approach uh, that's no, number one the other one is nasikh wal mansukh you know the abrogator and the abrogated that's the biggest you know fraud so, so, so these mechanisms were invented by people, by early people who were really very, very uh, 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 least qualified uh, to interpret the Mus'haf. They were not aware of the Mus'haf. They did not have the tools that we have nowadays. They did not have the databases uh, that we have data, uh, now we have uh, nowadays. So they, they came up with, a, a, I would say, a system a system of reconciling these contradictions. One, I said, the nasikh. The other one is that the hadith came to to uh, to to clarify the the tanzil. The the third is that the third, which is the most most dangerous, is to re is to change the meaning of the words. This is the 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 biggest biggest uh, uh, fraud, yeah. changing the meaning of the words. So. Uh, of course, changing the meaning of the words, we projected it on the Nasar and the Yahud. You know, we claim that they're the ones who changed the Torah and the and the uh, and the Bible, and the Quran never never gave any any proof that they played with the Torah or and 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 the the, the uh, Injil. They yeah. could have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the no, they do. They do. It's in chapter five, verse thirteen. Yahrafun al kalam an mawadha. Right. But but sorry, but this is not exactly. I was going to, I was. I'm sorry. Papa. Hello. I'm with you. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I was coming to this verse. Mm. This is. It does not change. It does not mean to change the words. Look mm. very carefully. It means to change the meaning of the words. Okay. You see, very very important. To and who is that? Who is at fault in doing this? You know the ones that I know who are at fault in doing this? Sunnis. The Muslims. <laughs> yes. the Muslims. I don't call them Muslims. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know why? <laughs> because, it, yeah, absolutely, I can prove it. Because infallibility, you know, they said Isma means infallibility. So here's a case in point. Look, here is a case in point. Inf Isma has to do with protection, not infallibility. They said no. In Shara, in the Shara'i meaning, in Sharia, it means something else. This is a case in point. I don't know, you know, I'm not a scholar of, of the Injil, the Bible, or the Torah. They could have done that. But I am interested in Islam. I'm interested in this revelation. I'm giving you an example where the Muslims have done that. Not once, not twice, repeatedly. Nasikh. Nasikh does not mean abrogation at all. You see? So they did not change the word. In other words, they did not say, let's remove this word and replace it with something else. No, they replaced the meaning of it. Anyways, I'll stop here. No, you're good. You're good. That was beautiful. Anyone wants to uh, follow up? Question? Anything? Please? <laughs> okay. Um, what I wanted to say. So this comes to the next topic, which was uh, planned for today, miracles, where I am anti-miracles. There are some, you know, things that happen in the Quran that I cannot explain yet. And I just say, well, for now, it's just, I don't know yet. But I think if we looked in Mother Nature, we studied science first, and then we looked in the Quran, this idea of, you know, miracles doesn't exist, right? Like... And I think Life and I were talking. We're talking about uh, Jesus uh, making a bird out of clay, and it flew, right? And I told him, 
but it's not a, a bird. A tear means a tire means it's like any flying instrument. It could be a clay. Like he could have made you know a plane that is shaped like a bird, and he blew into it. He didn't blow into it the ruh. It doesn't say that. We're assuming that. Right? And it flew. Right? And he actually said, you know, that interpretation fits in with how the Arabic and the grammar is written. Is that right, right? Like, so he made like an airplane. Like a, uh, yeah, it's a an aerodynamic engineer. Yeah. yeah, aerodynamics. Yeah, yeah. But, but how is that a clear sign of God? Like, why should I follow this guy? Because he did some advanced. Well, God tells us to look at the sun and the moon, look at your food, look at your water. No, it's very but, grounded. <laughs> that's different. That's different. Yeah. If you want to say that Jesus made a clay airplane and it flew, how is that a sign that he is from the creator? He's been sent by God. Because God is telling us to look at science, look at logic. That's how you're going to find God. Yeah, but following someone who can do some cool trick like that, that's not... Because like if you cannot truth, explain that trick, like you're gonna say, "Oh, this is what this was magic. We were seh. This was seh, right?" Okay, I gotta put thing, this thing on mute. Um... Yeah, but if someone comes out with cool technology today that no one knows about and says, "Look, God sent me. He showed me this," I'm not gonna. Yeah, that. dude, take uh, take a cell phone to Muhammad, uh, prop to Muhammad, prop to Muhammad, and he's gonna say, "This is magic. How do you? How how can I uh, hear you and talk to you and we're like three thousand miles apart?" Obviously, because he doesn't know the science. And for me, I think telephone is magic. Like how we're communicating right now, how my voice is going into this instrument and traveling to space and then come back to you and is deciphering my speech because of, like you know, uh, a, a sound is pressure. So it could be converted to like wavelengths and frequency. You know, there's uh, too much magic here. <laughs> so... I think if we look at Mother Nature and then read the Quran, we'll see it very grounded. God tells us to look at the sun and the moon and all that to find God. And then, you know... I agree. I agree. And yeah. to, to enter Islam. But like once you enter Islam, and now you have this weird verse that says, Oh, Jesus created a bird, a living bird, an organism. Ah, out of so, so this is actually where I disagree with you. Because yeah. you're going, for example, when Allah says to look at the sun and the moon... You're going under the assumption that science has explained how it works, that science says gravity causes the orbits of the sun and the moon. What if the sun and the moon actually has no explanation other than Allah sitting on its course, as Allah says in the Quran? And what if gravity is an, uh, a lie made up by Satan oh God. to you know, <laughs> confuse the atheists? Could be, could be, but it's, it's used every day when, uh, you know, for technology and stuff and airplanes and determining how much you know. oh no 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 so you see when planes fly they but, don't but let, 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 sorry, let, let me jump in for a minute i think the big debate here and paragon and i and i, and I have had this debate it's not that paragon doubts god's ability he says god can do whatever god wants but he keeps saying to me and we disagree he says that on earth god allows the laws of physics to play out so he doesn't interfere and yes he can do whatever he wants and yes he can he can obviously raise the dead and and, and put put the living to death but he says that doesn't happen until judgment day so until judgment day you have the laws of physics and therefore any prophet who came any messenger who came you have to explain their presence using the laws of physics because god will not bend the laws of physics until until the day of judgment this is what he says, not not what I say. I, I actually have oh, a yeah, different yeah. view. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think I think the laws of the laws of physics are bent, can be bent, yes. and 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 we have evidence of that. But this is the debate that we're having. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would say to that is that you would need someone who could who could show that they could do that, to prove that they are sent by God. You can't just have someone who does some cool technology, and then boom, they're a prophet of God. That's Silly. Yeah. But the thing is, God says the hearing side and intellect are will be questioned. So do not uphold what you have no knowledge of. So even if you take that verse where God says the expanding universe, right? Like uh, the universe and the, 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 the earth were one dot and then they ex he expanded it, right? If you don't understand that, just keep it. Like... Wait, did he, ex did, he explain, did he expand the earth? Uh, or just the universe? Uh, let me think. How did the verse go? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, word for word, they were, were both one chat. dot and God expanded them, like word for word in Arabic. Yeah. 
right? right. We know that. Yeah, it's, the we're, we're, we're there you go. Okay, so God is expanding the, the universe. Expanded, but yeah. Right. If you don't understand that back in 1400 years ago, don't uphold it. I don't know. It's okay to say I don't know. Until, you know, until you make a, uh, a, a what is it called, a telescope or something and you start making some math and stuff and you're like, oh, look at that. It expands. It's in the Quran. It makes sense now. Right? Uh, what is proof of the expansion? Huh? As to what is the proof of the expansion? Well, you know, uh, the blue and red wavelengths. I mean, I think a lot, there is a verse saying the heavens are expanding. So, to what degree is the... Yeah, I think some scientists uh, made a, a telescope and he saw red frequency from star, some planets yeah, or stars. Yeah, he saw and... red stars, he saw blue stars. Right. And, and because said... they're all suns, he says, that's one going further away from us and that's one coming closer to us. But that's not proof because how do you know that the stars themselves aren't red and blue? It because would be an assumption color, to say. Colors so, is associated so what science with says is that all stars are suns, but then it has to explain. Well, that one's blue, that one's red. How do we explain that? Okay, that one is traveling away from us, and that one is coming so close to us. So you have to. There you go. Because light is defined with wavelengths and frequency. If you remember the equation, I think it was, is it frequency is equal to wavelength over light, the speed of light. So something like that. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe it's inverse. Been a while. Um, so there's a, an ingredient for what is to be a light, right? So it's magic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Allah describes light pretty different to how it's described. Right. But anyway, and, that's not the point of the but, but, but My, What I'm trying to say is that, yeah? Yeah, even uh, Jesus, when in the Quran, when God says re Jesus raises the dead, nowhere does it say human. We assume it's human. We associate that with humanity. But you see many verses where God compares raising the dead human body to uh, the rain comes over a dead earth and it you know cries or whatever and the earth glow, gr grows and becomes alive and this is the example of how humans will be born uh, will be resurrected right i think jesus just yeah, yeah. you know formed a land and that's how, formed a dead land and made it alive that's how he raised the dead from the living um, we assume it's human but nowhere does it say human um, so why didn't the verse just say that? I think God wrote it in a way where he wants to see who's going to reason and who's going to rush to conclusion and follow what the Christian and the Jews say. That's my conspiracy theory. You know, it's written in a way where it can trip you. That's, you know. Um, you know, uh, can I... Yeah, but by the way, I've, I've surrendered to Patagon a long time ago. I, I think you just don't don't argue him. That's don't the argue with his stubborn... <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, if, if he doesn't do very clear signs, then uh, it's not fair. Like, uh, it, the, the explanation Paragon gave for the clay thing, he made, okay, he made a clay airplane and he blew into it and it flew. Oh, nice. Amazing. He's from God. It doesn't make sense. Bro, take a Take your cell phone, take your iPhone back to 1400 years ago and give it to Muhammad. He's going to be like, oh my God, you must be a magician. Oh, does that, okay, does that mean that uh, it came from God? Yes of course no? it came from God because he designed the universe that way. He did, we the didn't cell design, phone was made by humans. We didn't, kinda, we didn't create iPhones. Wait, we does that used mean that the, the laws human of who nature. made the phone came from God? Huh? As a messenger. Does that mean that the human who makes the cell phone comes from God and is a message. Of course, because the iPhone is just an imitation of our body instrument. Like if you studied the ear and the eyes, oh, now you got your... Yeah, but is he someone... Is, okay, when I say he's a messenger, I mean like he's someone that God is telling him what to say, giving laws, etc. Someone you should follow and attribute to God. Oh, oh, I see how you're doing that connection. No, because I will never have the audacity to say, oh, I made this new technology. I'm a new Rasul. Like, you're going to say, well... Yeah, well, that's exactly what you're saying, Jesus. No, 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 no. Because I think uh, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the... No, what's that's the exactly word? what you're saying, Jesus. Did. No, 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 no. Please, wait. Uh, the... What's the word? The challenge in the Quran. If someone has something else other than the Quran, make him come with it, bring the book, and take... Bear witness, except for Allah, right? I'm not going to bear witness to that. I'm not going to do that. So I know my limits. Yeah. So actually, I agree with you. So that's the thing, right? Uh, every prophet brought miracles. Muhammad's miracle was the Quran, right? You agree? Okay. Now, 
when Allah says, uh, gives the challenge, He's saying that this is a miracle no one will ever be able to beat, no one will ever be able to challenge. What you're saying is Jesus did a miracle that we can actually uh, duplicate, create something better than that. Of course, why not? No, create something better than that. Right Where now. does it say that? Where does it say or we duplicate can? Or... No, no, I'm saying Muhammad's miracle, right? It's something that we will never be able to be. That's what they're well, trying to say. Well, Jesus was Jesus also giving miracle. the Injil, right? No, no, no. But we're talking about his, his like, his physical like signs, right? Okay. So you're saying him creating a, a bird, a clay bird, yeah. is like, yeah, a sign. Very. Also, how would a clay bird ever like fly if it's meeting the laws of physics? Huh? How? Could you how would it? a clay bird? How would a clay airplane uh, ever fly if it's meeting the laws of physics? Uh, Is that possible? Well, uh, bird doesn't really fly, right? They more like glide. They're weightless. They flap okay, their yeah, wing but how does how does how could clay glide? Because Isn't God, because heavy? in the in the verse it says Jesus blew into it. it doesn't say ruh. Yeah, but but we assume it's ruh. But, I think it's just air, and it just so he, yeah. But like I could make a little. And I could blow into it. It would have to de defy the laws of physics for it to glide. No, because clay it is a bit heavy. You you have to make no? It, no no no. You can make it a thin layer of clay, man. Come on. Come on. Can, okay, can so he made a little thin. All right. He made me... a thin little. So yeah, thin so layer someone could have looked like at what density. Jesus made. You have to play with density. So someone could have made looked at what Jesus made. Copied. How it, does a boat it, float? How does a boat float? No no no. Listen 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 listen. If someone saw what Jesus made, could they have copied him and blew into it and done the if same thing? If they understood the aerodynamic engineer behind it, yes, I agree. Uh, Sorry, uh, I'm missing the question that you guys are looking at. What is the question here? So, What's the point? Miracles. I say there is no miracles in the Quran. For, I'm being stubborn here, right? Uh, everything is explained to, through science, and we need to study science to understand the Quran before we could, like, the Bible... To understand the Quran, something like that. That's the question. So you're going to another hadith. So what saying. hadith? That, yeah, if you want to say mother, uh, mother nature, the laws of mother nature are hadith. I agree. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what people say about the laws of nature is a hadith. Well, yeah, people understanding of laws of nature is hadith. Okay, so just so Ima understands, is a uh, uh, paragon is saying that uh, uh, the prophets didn't like do miracles. Like for example, Jesus. Turning a bird into, uh, turning clay into a bird, it, he actually, you know, maybe he made a little clay airplane and he blew into it and it floated and it flew. Yes. Uh, Moses spitting the sea might have been some advanced stuff that like created electromagnetic field and it split the water. Like uh, Jesus had a father. Like things like this. Right. You know what's interesting? The planes that are designed today are designed by, they're following the birds. That's, but yeah. Go ahead, Omar. Can I inter interject here just to, for clarification? I think th there's some very interesting point that you guys are raising, and I want to understand, I want to see if my inference is correct. Uh, do I understand from this discussion that where, irrespective, irrespective of whether they were, were quote-unquote miracles or, or physically understandable if the one has the right physics, were they intended to validate the prophecy of Isa or not? Is this a logical question here? Yes, well, because Allah says that they rejected Isa base, even though he gave him clear signs and miracles. There's a verse. Let me see if I can find it. Please, because this is very good, very, very interesting thought that you guys are raising, because when I think about Prophet uh, Musa, uh, the the splitting of the sea was was a, 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 to 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 help Musa and his people rather than uh, uh, rather than to to demonstrate anything else. It was too late. Uh, the the ayat uh, uh, that were sent uh, some of them were for punishment. The the so called miracle of the flood of Noah was a punishment the miracles the quote-unquote miracles of Ad and Thamud and so forth were punishments uh, the miracles again of uh, that was uh, sent to Qomlut was a punishment uh, in the same in the same discussion if if a magician were to come at the time of Isa 
and to produce something does that make him does that make him make people believe him in him as a prophet uh do you see my point yeah yeah so just so you know um for example moses he actually did do other miracles right in front of pharaoh he had like with his hand he had his staff. The, the, the serpent yes yeah. yeah he had a lot um but paragon would say all of them are like technology like magic tricks like technology tricks or something I like that technology tricks. Yes, Paragon embr uh, uh, embraces that, uh, endorses that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but but you know, it, it is it is it is really hard to to make that that conclusion because the most most in my opinion the most clear uh, ayah sign because miracle the word miracle is is not in the mushaf mujiza it's rather I, ayah sign right yeah. is when Allah says the. Fire be burden was salam and be cool and and salam on Ibrahim. So they threw him in the fire uh, and he was not hurt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so, so we can, and Allah elsewhere in the Quran says, La li kalimatihi. I understand kalimat as the physic, physical laws of nature. So, but do we know all, all the laws of physics? Uh, people are still uh, struggling to know all the laws of physics. So uh, it, 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 my understanding of the Mus'haf is that Allah never, uh, the, the concept of, of quote-unquote miracle in the traditional Christian sense or traditional Muslim sense doesn't exist. Uh, uh, that's my understanding. Now, uh, when Allah interferes, look, when Allah intervene to change something, the question is, did he, according to the Mus'haf, he did. The question is, did he intervene in, in quote-unquote magical way? In, in the, in, in, did he intervene in the quote, kun fayakun, unquote, type of understanding? I don't think so. Uh, in the case of one of the battles of the, Prophet that were that was documented in the Mus'haf, Allah sent. We made you win the war by sending soldiers that you have not seen. So, in other words, there was a cause effect. That connection was there, and that's everywhere in the Mus'haf. There is the cause effect. You know, they won the war because Allah sent soldiers. It's not like Allah said, "Boom!" You know, with with a, with a magic wand win the war and they won the war so it, it might if i were to to interpolate in other cases in the mushaf other scenarios there was a cause and effect whether we know the cause is a different story yeah. and and this of course brings us to this very 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 touchy subject i don't think it's as touchy anymore is uh, the virgin mary you know uh, was her, her uh, did she conceive by miraculously or not? You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> you see. So I, I'm one of those who don't believe that she conceived miraculously. But it's 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 comforting to know that many growing number of people believe in the same way. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it's not that Allah wanted something in her uterus. Boom, and there it was. No. There was a cause effect. There was a, a process, yeah. a quote unquote physical process. Whether we know all these physical processes or not, and the laws that go behind them, is 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 a different story altogether. Yeah, and, and... You, you know, but, but guys, I'm I'm gonna actually disagree very strongly with this one. I think Much you're more. really not understanding. <laughs> the composition no no you're not understanding the composition of what god says so god says very clear to us that when he decides to do something he does it we don't question him he is not questioned for what he does but they are questioned so again you keep bringing god into this this realm of physicality and laws of physics and no no but you know if god were to do this then he would be defying the laws of gravity but he's telling you I do what I do. You do not do anything except what I tell you to do. So it's, it's very clear 
who is the master and who is the servant. So when God revealed himself to the mountain, let's talk about Moses yeah. in, in, uh, in Surah 7, verse 143. Musa لِمِقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبَّهُ قَالَ رَبِّي أَرِنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَيْكَ قَالَ لَن تَرَانِي وَلَكِنْ أَنظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَلْ فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّ رَبَّهُ لِلْجَبَلْ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً And when his Lord revealed himself to the mountain, he created it or he made it into, um, I guess, you know, dekka is, is, is what, dust or, or, or rubble. Rubble is, is the right word. But again, you keep putting God in the same realm as humanity, saying, no, no, laws of physics, he can't break them. If he wanted Mary to be born, uh, to, to have a child without a man, and that's what he says happened, why do you question it? I don't understand the questioning here, that God cannot do it. Of course he can do it. And you all say, yes, yes, he can. But he said he will not. Where did he say he will not? I actually find no verse in the Quran where God said, I will not do what I want to do. Actually, the opposite. He says, I do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I'm the only one who does what I want to do. So, and everyone else actually fo follows the laws of physics. So my, 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 my pushback would be when God says, how can I have a son when I have no sahib, sahiba, like when I have no partner? So the, the laws of Jesus, making a baby is, Allah, is required to sex. And there's no female that can embrace his, I don't know, I don't want to say that word, but like can, you know, uh, <laughs> have God's baby. You didn't right? have sex with Mary though, what are you saying? I'm not saying that, I'm saying because God says, how can I have a son when I have no sahiba? It means, it implies that for for a baby to be born, it takes two, it doesn't take one. So I actually sent a verse, 2258, where uh, Abraham challenges the idol gods to make the sun rise from the west. Why would Abraham give the idol gods a challenge he, if he had the same mindset as you? So, why would he challenge the idol gods to make the sun? For, why would he challenge the idol gods to change physics? Yeah, because he can't do that, right? Like, no, no, but you're saying God would never do that. So why is he challenging the idol gods to do it? Because but, God. But, but that's but, but that's that's Ibrahim. That's not God. Yeah, but I'm saying Abraham doesn't have the same perspective. No, but that's Ibrahim who, who made that challenge. It wasn't Allah that made that challenge. That's so number he gave, one. So Abraham gave them a challenge. And he's put it in the Quran. Allah so it. Ibrahim's words is not uh, God's word. Asking that's them to Omar change physics. Yeah, but that's again, that's, that's Ibrahim. That's not Allah. That's number one. And Isn't Allah said, process? yeah, and Allah says, فَلَا يُسْأَلْ not, That's different from فَعَلَى Sa'ala is different, you know, the, the, the headmaster is the one that rules the, let's say, the house. Nobody asks him. But if he wants to do something, he does it according to certain laws. Third, well, where, did Allah say, where did Allah say that, uh, um, that uh, uh, Isa was uh, a virgin birth? Where? The word that Azra doesn't exist. Didn't he say no. Mary was... Uh, no, it doesn't say Azra. No, 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 no. She said, she said, Lem yam sesani bashar. Why did he send, she saw a bashar. That's why she said, Lem yam sesani insan. She said, Lem yam sesani bashar. This is critical. The, you see, the, this is Christian narrative. The one that we mostly believe in. Okay. He sent someone, whether that person whether that person had intercourse with Mary or not, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, so, yeah. so, so, so that 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 Allah says, you know, He doesn't play. He doesn't play games with the universe. He doesn't play games with the universe. And and there's no proof that that He changes the laws of physics or the nature at least the ones we at least the ones we know there's no proof but but this doesn't but but there's no transgression if we have this discussion there's no there's no kufr there's no there's no problem right. because we're sticking to the text you know this kun fayakun the kun fayakun concept the khalq concept khalq is from something to something it's a transformation it's not from nothing to something there's not nothing popping up from nowhere, from Al-Adam. Nothing. 
this is a, this is an alien concept to the Mus'haf. I mean, of course, those who 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 claim who support this concept are are always attacked as materialistic. Of course, everything is about materialism in the Mus'haf. Everything in the Mus'haf is about materialism. The validation of the message is materialism. Look around you, Allah says. Never said, think about a certain philosophy to prove that I am there. Okay? Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, but let me let me push back on this, Omar, because especially on Maryam, and, and you, you, you were both mentioning Maryam, you know, in, in Surah 3, verse 47, قالت, Rabbi anna yakuna li walad wa lam bashar. She said, my Lord, how can I have a, a son when no human has touched me? كذلك الله يخلق ما شاء. It is such that God creates what he wishes. If he decrees any um, any order, then uh, Then he says, be and it is. The example of Jesus with, with God is like the example of Adam. He created him from, from dust and then he said to him, be and he was. So it's very clear, you know, th this is not... No, no, she had sex with someone. It wasn't a human. It was a jinn, malaika, some other creature, and therefore the laws of physics. This is, again, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading the Quran. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bringing an external uh, source here. It says, this is God's decree. Kun fayakun, be and it is. And we cannot question God has that ability. We all agree he has the ability. You're just saying he doesn't apply it on earth. That's the difference. You're saying, but I want you to give me the law in the Quran where it says, I, God, do not, do not decree my power on earth. If you show me the verse where he says, I don't decree my power on earth, then I, I, I completely surrender this argument. But if there is no verse that says, I decree my power or I, I give up my power, it's like Superman when he becomes human. This is not Superman becoming human. God never says in the Quran, I will not be God. So if there is a verse that you have found that I have missed or we have missed, please quote it. Other than that, we will say categorically God does what God wants. God was God does what God wishes and God has the power to do whatever he wants. Bends the laws of physics, bends the laws of time, bend, bends the laws of reality. Of course he can. That's that's exactly what he no, is. He that's what a God is. Otherwise, he wouldn't be a God. I think he can, but he won't. He will never put a, a believing mu'min person into hellfire. Even if his, his good outweighs the bad deed. And plus God's mercy, he will never do that because his word is, is you know, final, right? That's one. Two, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Uh, when it comes to Ibrahim and Zechariah having a son, they said, how can we have a son when our, we're old, right? And we all know they, they didn't have, uh, they didn't make love with a younger woman or adopted a child. They just went to their old wives. And that's proven today in science. We have, you know, women in their 60s and 90s not maybe 80s, uh, giving birth, right? So that's still possible. So why is it when it comes to Mary, it's just, you know, it breaks the trend. Ibrahim went to his wife. Zechariah went to his wife. Maryam didn't have a husband. And chapter 3, verse 47 could be read like when, when, it, when the angel said, this is how God creates what he wills. It could be like, how can I have a son when no man, man touches me? The answer would be like, this is how. This is how you will get pregnant. A man will touch you. It could be taken that way. Also, you know, so, I how want... do you guys take twenty one ninety one? Just quickly. Uh, uh, but 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 be before we go to that, before we jump to another verse, قالت ربي أن يكون لي ولد. Of course, the previous verse in Allah يبشرك. Okay, بكلمة منه بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح. But then in, 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 the, in, the, in the pertinent verse where you call him and okay, قال في أن يكون لي ولد ولم يمسسني بشر قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء يخلق notice قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء إذا قضى أمرا إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون the كن فيكون concept is always associated with أمر إذا قضى أمرا إنما يقوله كن فيكون it's nothing popping from nowhere this, this theme the, the, I think this has to be really carefully looked upon it's nothing coming from nowhere so now it, it, it may not be extremely clear but but there's no negation 
to the thought that that she was conceived naturally okay because you basher you basher is something you tell someone good tidings something in advance okay before it is going to happen not after it happened okay anyways you you were referring to another verse brother go ahead uh 2191 remember the one who guarded her chastity okay uh kevin any mu'min who marries a woman or a, or a male may, they make love and then they get divorced by god's law they are still uh muhsineen. okay it doesn't mean virgin it's not azra so you can lose your virginity and still oh. become a muhsin so she got married right with this man and then he bounced yeah yes yes we believe we can um okay N new topic anything or but hey it's good that we have like two different uh, school of thoughts <laughs> but you know we cannot divide just because we are different in understanding the quran right the jews only divide when the what when the when their quran i mean their book was revealed not before not because they had different they probably had different understanding before the book was revealed too right so always remember the the sharia so this is a good one actually no, but but but, but I, I'll, I'll agree with you pardon um it's yes. irrelevant you know whether whether you tell me virgin birth or she was married yeah i think again i can i can i can disagree with you by the way yeah but, yeah yeah no and then and i think and this... then no and then whatever whatever the conclusion we come to right it changes nothing yeah. you know my belief in god god alone and god alone yeah. you know i i will specify is absolute that's the one that we care about yeah I moses see. stuff you know virgin birth when right. he split the sea was it an earthquake was it you know was it a seismic event was it actually the staff that did that were the birds birds that Solomon spoke to? Were they actually messengers and, 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 and soldiers that he had? I think they're irrelevant in, in the context of things. And I agree with you. And I, and I think that's the point you're trying to make. Yeah. It is irrelevant. You know, I will never, ever go against you or anyone in, in this grouping because we disagree on... Yeah. Because I can't prove any of this, by the way. None of you can prove it. Neither I can prove it, nor can you prove against it because we weren't there. We didn't live... In the time we didn't do a a a you know vasectomy or we didn't do an autopsy on on right. the bodies we don't know you know we yeah. just we just we just learned what we learned we think this is what it means um but it doesn't change but the faith that we have in god and this is the point that i think we we need to focus on is absolute you know unquestionable can he of course he can does he debatable some of you are saying yes he can some of you are saying he restricts himself. He doesn't do it on the on the day of judgment. He does he does whatever he wants. I actually don't have a problem with what you're saying. I I think look laws of the Quran, the laws of morality, um, you know the moral compass, how to behave, what to do, what not to do, the laws of marriage, the laws of divorce, the laws of war. Those are the things that count. Yes, yes, and and these are absolutely the critical elements. And these are the ones, you know, the al come out to me. So I will never disagree with you, even though I disagree with you. Yeah, no, the brotherhood stays, right? Uh, <clears throat> no like fearing, no, not, none, none of that, right? And I think, you know, we're Muslims or Mu'mins, whatever. No, no. absolutely. Can I say something? You know, it, it, it's it, absolutely, of course. Of course we don't, uh, you know, we're all brothers and sisters. I mean, this is, uh, it should be said without, without any qualms. And and a, a healthy debate is always good. In fact, I, I learn a lot from these myself, and all of us probably uh, learn. Um, the thing is that you know when we go to khalaqa, khalaqa in the mushaf never comes from nowhere. Khalaqa min, you know, if you just look carefully at the word khalaqa, it doesn't, it does not imply popping from nowhere. You know, we're not diminishing. We're not doing mashiatillah, iradatillah, quwwatillah. We're not. We're not diminishing that. We're just our effort, my I talk about myself, is to understand to understand my universe, to understand the creation, to understand. I'll tell you something very deep. To understand how Allah works, I want to understand how He works. 
and that's not there's no problem in, in, in trying to, to do that. The second point I want to make, a friend of mine, very, very smart, he once came to me and he said, well, if Allah can, you know, boom, say that and everything pops up, why did he take six days to create the heavens and uh, the earth? Why not in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a split second, right? It took time. Why? That's a good Anyways. question. Yeah. Like cooking. <laughs> cooking takes time. You can't you know, cook too fast, you get it burned, and if you cook too slow, it gets, I don't know. Uh, absolutely absolutely and and in cooking you need to know the laws of of, of baking <laughs> the laws of fire yeah. the the material at your disposal it's basically chemistry. all of this yeah. yeah you you're in command you are in command of the whole situation otherwise the dish will turn out to be lousy right yeah so I so I, I think I think for me for me you know some people might say, Yes, I, I don't remember the name of the brother who said it, it, it's irrelevant or, or he did not use this word. Uh, I, I, I do believe that in the sense that well, I should say this is for me, this is not a philosophical discussion. I mean, you know, this is a very, very important discussion because I want to know how Allah operates. Simple. Yeah, very simple. Okay, if I know and I, I, in my humble effort, I've been reaching, coming closer to that understanding, how he operates, you know, uh, uh, that makes, makes my life much more valuable and makes, makes my efforts uh, more honed yeah. towards the right thing. That's all. It's not a, it's not, don't get the impression, anyone listening, don't get the impression that this is a, a philosophical discussion. Yeah. No, no, this is just, not. just sharing perspective and being open. No, but, but, but for, for, for me, for the purpose of to have a better life. Yeah. You know? But you, you know, Omar, I would actually ask a different question. I would never ask, why couldn't he? do it in a different way i would say why is he telling me this you know to me that question is very strange why why does it take him six days he could have done it in one day or one second um that's a bit bizarre i would actually say why does he tell me it took him six days what does he want me to learn you know what is the lesson here that because not, nothing in the quran is given um for the sake of entertainment every single word Every single word, a verse has a meaning. So when he says, I created the heavens and earth in six days, and then he says, in a, yawm and under, under rabbika ka alfi sanatin mimma ta'adun, a day with your Lord is a thousand years of, of what you calculate. Why does he want me to know that it took 6,000 years to create the universe? What's, what's the relevance? Can I verify that, that information? Is this something that I can research and then you know, find out? Everything, you know, when he says, uh, and say, I had no knowledge of the higher authority or the higher, higher council when they disputed. Why are you telling me this? Well, there's a reason he's telling you because he wants you to go and think and understand and reach a conclusion. But it doesn't negate, again, this is my issue, huh? guys, mm -hmm. negating God's power. God is God. You know, he could wipe us all out in, in a millisecond. You wouldn't even know you existed. All of us would be gone. We wouldn't even know that we were here debating this, this, this debate. So to question him and say, yeah, but you know, he could have done this and he could have done. I think that's actually bordering on blasphemy. I wouldn't even. Oh, no. <laughs> I would never say I would never say God can or can't. Of course he can. And he can wipe everyone out. And you could, by the way, never even remember you existed. And, and we would never have this conversation. But there's a reason he's telling you these things. There's a lesson, you know, why he wiped out the people of Ad and Thamud and Lut and the way he wiped them out, you know. Why is he telling you this? When he says, uh, you know, the gods of, 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 of Noah, uh, why is he telling you their names? There is a reason. He wants you to go and find something out. Now, you're not finding it out. That's, that's, that's a different thing. But I honestly think it doesn't negate from him. So, it just tells me that we're not capable of understanding why we're being told. So it's not the blasphemy we're looking for or we're after, right? It's more like, okay, if you take science out of the deen, out of Islam, you're going to get Sunnis. You're going to get jinn possession. 
you're gonna get oh drink the camel drink the urine of the camel because it has some i don't know if uh, if uh, a fly you know it's dead uh, in your tea dip it all the way down because one half ha one half has the sickness the other half has the cure you get this crap right you get this bs when you take science out of islam right now of course now this is where I come from and that's why I'm super scientific, super grounded and empirical because I don't want to believe in, you know, drinking camel urine has some benefits in there, right? And I think this is what it leads to, like when something... But you don't need science to tell you that, it's not in the Quran, so... Excuse me? You don't, I don't need science to tell me what? You don't need science to tell you that you shouldn't drink camel piss or eat the left and right wing of a fly because... It's not in the Quran. It's not in the uh, yet the Sunnis no, believe no. it. Like there's YouTube videos of a Saudi doing wudu. Yeah, I, with I know a camel what you're urine. saying, but like you, you're saying, look at those <laughs> Sunnis. They're following uh, it, it hadith. Leads to that. If they had science, they would never follow hadith. It's kind of irrelevant. Like it's not in the can Quran. I, can I share something that I came across just a few days ago? So uh, I wanted to share it in terms of the word uh, khalaqa. Uh, I thought it was created. I thought the word meant created, uh, but I came across the verse where it talks about uh, Aisa. I was discussing it with someone, Aisa, when he made the bird. The word khalaqa is used, and we also came along a, a, a verse where it talks about uh, something, Amma mm yakhliqoon. -hmm. Uh, so I, it made me. Uh, question this idea of is khalaqa to just create uh, in its rawest form of the word hmm. yeah that's a good question because how I see it in the Quran more like designing maybe I think designing might be a good one because you know scientists will say energy is not created nor destroyed it just exists yeah, you cannot destroy energy and you cannot create energy. It just converts nuclear energy to mechanical energy, electrical energy to mechanical energy, uh, chemical energy, like uh, your uh, the gas to mechanical energy, like moving your car forward, right? Uh, yeah, I think I think in terms of the Quran, uh, what word creation is kun uh, fayakun. Hmm. Maybe. Well, but, but you, you know, on, on this one, Ahmed, I'm, I'm just looking at the verses. I don't find the same thing that you said because in 1620 it says, And those who serve or, or those who call on other than God, they do not create anything and they are created. And then in 23 in 23 it says, And they took uh, from uh, besides him gods that do not create anything and they are created I, I don't find anywhere where it says that people create we don't create anything uh, that verse where it's about Aisa and he made the bird from clay I think the word used there is that he in making the bird I think the word is khalaq yes it does say khalaq Like I said, it's something I came across a few days ago. Uh, so I just wanted to share it because specifically it was from that verse. Yeah, and, it might be uh, like a I'll design. Find... Because we can't really create anything. We can just use whatever well, resource we have. Leith, Leith also posed the question about uh, the six days thing. And is that not uh, something about the khalaq of the Samat wal ard? think so i think what he was po uh, paying our attention to the time yeah oh. sorry i i was pointing out the fact that there's a lesson there that we need to learn so mentioning it uh, again if if it wasn't mentioned would that lesson from your faith no it wouldn't. it wouldn't would that change anything it wouldn't so you're being told something to go and research when he says i created the heavens and earth in six days and again, a day with God is a thousand years. Why is he telling you that? If you probably researched it, you would find that the heavens and earth were created in 6,000 years. 
that's just my conclusion. I, I can't prove it, you know, um, without without any any evidence. I'm just saying there is a reason you're told the information you're told. You know, why are you told? I mean, there, there's a thousand things in the Quran I can mention yeah. where you don't need to know them. You honestly don't need to know them. That is true. But they're given to you. Yeah. You know, why is the the name of of the prophet's stepson given to you? Why, why, why do you have his name? Why do you know his name is Zayd? Doesn't, you don't need to know his name. It could have just said when, when his stepson, you know, ended, ended with her, we allowed you to marry her so that we may, we may prove that you can marry the wives of your um, stepchildren. Yeah. But why, why mention the word Zayd? Again, I, I don't have the answer, by the way. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm saying... When the names are mentioned, there's a lesson. Why is there no woman mentioned in the Quran except Mary? No woman. 114 chapters. Mary is the only one. Even the Queen of Sheba, who we think, you know, her name is Balqis, but we don't know this for a fact. She's not mentioned, although she's mentioned in a very honorable position and she submitted to God and, you know, she spoke to Solomon. But he only says, Tamdukum Imra. They are ruled by a woman. That woman has no name. Also, Pharaoh's Why? wife. That's a good one. Yeah. And Pharaoh's wife. Thank you. Thank you. Pharaoh's wife, a believing woman who said, you know, God construct for me, uh, Rabbi ibn Ali Bayt and the Kabil Jannah, construct for me a palace um, in, in, in paradise. And God speaks of her very highly. We don't know her name. Yeah. Why is only Mary mentioned? I, again, I, I think there are reasons they're not mentioned. You know, my, my reason, by the way, for this one, and, and, I, and I'll share it with you, because there is a verse in the Quran that says, to marry, um, we have preferred you over all the women of the world. And I think one of the ways God has preferred her over all the women of the world is by not mentioning their names. She is the only name mentioned in the entire Quran. So that to me is, is, a, is a fulfillment of that verse which says, we have, we have preferred you over the women of the world. Again, that's just my interpretation of it. But... Everything is being told for a reason. The names, yeah. the subjects, the six days. It's not saying that God is limited. That's what I was trying to say. He's, he, obviously, he's not limited. That's See, just, but you know, it's, it's crazy if we even think that. Different topic. I have an issue with the word alameen. Okay, because it comes from the word ilm, which is knowledge. I think it means, alameen means the knowledgers, right? So when God says, I chose you from the alameen, I chose you from the people who know. That's what I think it means. I don't think it means Alamin, but that's just, you know, different topic. <laughs> right? Like when he, God says... So, sorry, I, say, it, say it again. I, I didn't understand. So when God says, I chose the Jews over the Alamin, he didn't choose them over the world. He chose them over, like, he chose the Jews, the people of knowledge, from the Alamin, from the knowledgers. So think of it like this. If you have a college that has, you know... Uh, uh, chemistry, physics, uh, math, English, philosophy, right? And then God would just take the philosophers. He chose the philosophers over the alamin, over the chemical, chemistry, physics, English, math, right? He chose one group over the others. That's how I see it. Not the whole world. I don't know. But that's because of the root word analysis, right? Like I try to be centralized around the word ilm, knowledge, Right? Afala, yeah. But this is just a different topic. Uh, I always had an issue with that. Um, and like also like the the word Lord, like, Rabb, right? It doesn't mean Lord. It means someone who nurture you. Right? So he is the Lord, the Rabb al-Alameen, he is the nurturer of the knowledgers. He gives you knowledge, right? That makes sense. Um, there was a verse that I really like. Uh, which is over there? Uh, chapter three, verse seventy-nine. Right? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It's not for a human that God should give him the scripture and authority and prophethood, and then he would say to the people, "Be servant to me rather than God." But Okay, here the mistranslation happened. Uh, be pious scholars. It, it, okay. Wakunuwa uh, Rabbanin. So they become Rabb, if you want to 
use so they, they don't become lords but rabbinin they become nurturer or uh uh you know min rabbak you know who raised you like you know that's abu kuomak right like your mom and your dad so they become those so they become kunua rabbinin become nurturer or learners of what the lord bima kuntum ta'lamun of what you know al kitab from the book وَبِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْرِسُونَ And what you studied. See? It, it, it doesn't say become scholars, like Rabbanin, <coughs> but... Please, Omar. Yeah. He's leaving. Oh, He's okay. Leaving. Sorry. Peace upon you, Omar. Good talk. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. But anyways. Uh... Yeah. Anyways. Well, that was just a little tangent. Any other questions? Uh, why did you make the uh, server topic history of Islam and then miracles like in uh, quotations? What do you mean by that? Uh, if miracles are real or not, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but so they're not, they're not miracles. Okay. Yeah. They are. Like miracles, like whatever, quote, quote, miracles. Or... Are they miracles? Like, are they really miracles, or we don't know it is a miracle? We just call it a miracle because I call cell phones miracles. Like, I don't understand that science behind it. I just think it's a miracle for me. Yeah, but it comes down to should you follow someone just because they have some cool technology? Like, I don't. Yeah, technology. Yeah. Do that. Anyway. Or science. They know some science. Yeah. So, uh, life. Before you go, um, could you explain your uh, understanding of verse? Uh, give me a second. The one with the okay, verse thirty-three, fifty-nine. O prophet, tell your wives and your daughter and the woman of the believers to bring down your over themselves of their outer garments that is more suitable than they will be known and not be abused. Could you give us like, from the beginning, like you said last time? Um, thirty-three, fifty-nine. Give me a second. I'll just open the verse fifty-nine. Huh? Yes. Did the, oh, there it is. So, what did I say about that last time? I remember what I said. So, what I was saying is that this is a verse asking the prophets, wives, and daughters, and the women of the believers to protect themselves from those that would do harm from them, and that's obviously not the believers. So the verse is telling them that you need to lengthen your garments so that you will not be known and therefore not be harmed. Now, who's harming them? It's not the believers who are harming them. I was saying that clearly the people harming them are the disbelievers or the rejectors or whoever exists in their community. And this is so whilst the Sunnis use this verse and say this orders the women of, of, of the believers or the believers to lengthen their garments, it actually doesn't say that. It says they should lengthen their garments so they should not be known and therefore not be harmed. So you dress accordingly to the situation and the circumstances you're in. That, that's, I think, what I was saying last time. So if you're, in a, if you're in Arabia and all the women in Arabia wear the abaya, the, the, you know, the veil or the headscarf, or you're in Afghanistan, then a believing woman should actually wear the abaya or the headscarf or the veil so she she would not be harmed. And if the believing woman is in Europe, and Europe they all, you know, r relatively dress differently, then she can dress according to them. The bare minimum we have in the Quran is that a woman covers her private parts and her bosom. That's the bare minimum that we have. But that verse specifically is talking about protection from harm, and the harm doesn't come from a believing society. It comes from an unbelieving society. So I agree with you. So th that says you're saying in Saudi Arabia, since there are mu'mins or so-called mu'min or Muslims, right? Yeah. Women shouldn't really should, they just do the bare minimum, chest and uh, private part, right? But uh, well, no, not in Arabia. I, I wouldn't advise that in Arabia. Oh, of course, so because they're not the real Muslims, <laughs> right? They're actually no, no. they would in, in, in Arabia. They, yeah, in Arabia, they're quite crazy. That they'd actually kill her. Uh, no, what I was saying, so if, if the woman was in Arabia, so if you had a believing woman in Arabia today, yeah. she would dress accordingly. And again, what does the verse in the Quran tell them? It says, lengthen your garments, 
ذلك ادنى ذلك ادنى ان تعرفنا ان يعرفنا فلا يؤذين that is uh, least so that they would not be recognized or that is least so that they would be recognized and not harmed who's harming them believers are not harming them so clearly it's not the believers who are the ones doing the action it's the non believers or 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 whoever it is you know the the, the other party yeah. so you blend in i i think the the message here is clear you cannot use this to to tell me women should cover up you can actually use this to tell me women believing women need to blend in so they're not identified and persecuted i mean again go back to the time of the prophet persecution the believers are being hunted they were actually expelled from from mecca mm-hmm. according to to their own history and and some of them were 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 actually uh, slaughtered or killed what would have happened to a woman who's identified as a believing woman rape murder i i mean i i would expect that's what happens to her you yeah, know they would they would just grab her and they yes. would do something very nasty to her so the command here is blend in do not stand out lest you will be harmed so you know and again it's it's using the word nisa and nabi the, the wives of the prophet so it's very um it's it's very much restricted or or related to time and place and not not across space and time so anywhere you see the word prophet is very time and space oriented it's not universal so that actually agrees like that interpretation or perspective it, it goes with the context because if you read two verses before that it says those who insult god and his messenger will be rejected by god in the world blah, 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 blah. and those who undeservedly insult believing men and believing women will bear the guilt of the slander and the flag- flagrant sin Right, so obviously they're being harassed. The believing men. And- I, I would, I, I would agree. This is a very hostile audience. I mean, yeah. Surah thirty three in general is a very hostile surah. Oh. It talks about the prophet, so you know, um, and and what happens with the prophet. It's 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 quite hostile. It's it's not a, it's it's one of the most unpleasant surahs I've read. Right. Yep. Um, actually, chapter nine is a very unpleasant one for me. <laughs> um, Okay, but then the kind of if you if the bare minimum, if a woman wear the bare minimum and went to Saudi Arabia, it just shows that Saudi Arabia are not believers. They are the disbelievers who insult the believing men and the believing true. women, right? True, right. very true. You're absolutely right. Yes, that's what I'm trying. So to So anyone who no no, but but you're right. So anyone who would oppress or harass uh, a believing man or woman who are following the Quran in in the minimum required dress code, of course they're not believers. And and how can we even claim that any country on earth is now a believing nation or a Muslim nation? I wouldn't claim that to any nation. Yeah, only here. This is the only nation. <laughs> it's not a nation. Where where is where is here? In Japan? Uh, on Discord. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. I thought I thought, I thought you were going to mention a country. No, no, I wish. <laughs> Am I able to bring something up, guys? Um, was discussed before. Sure. Yeah, I think we have a few more minutes. I mean. Yeah. So I think Layeth, uh, I heard that apparently like the conversation was that uh, angels can't like disobey God, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, that's what Layeth So that's said. actually like not true. Whenever Allah says that the angels don't disobey, it's only the angels of hellfire being mentioned in reference. It's not all the angels. So if you can find a verse, I mean, if you want to pull up the verses about where they don't disobey, I'm pretty sure you'll see. It's referring to the 19 angels of hellfire, not all angels. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe. That's an interesting so, point to bring up. Unless you, have, you can show me a verse where it says it's talking about all angels, I'll concede. Let, let me check. I know that exactly. So you're talking about verse uh, 61.6, which speaks of Yahweh uh, Amanu. Um, on it or upon it and, and this is talking of hellfire are powerful angels who do not disobey their lord what he orders them and they do what they are told so leave that with me for for a moment and maybe i'll come back to you yeah because i heard it was like an argument whether agents had free will or not but when you man, read the verses it's from the argument, Quran, it's a conversation it's... Uh, oh, why you uh, want to get a fight, man? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> debate. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. A debate or a disagreement. A disagreement. Yeah, so when you actually read the Quran, all the verses that talk about angels having free will, it's always about the angels of hellfire, not about all the angels. Just so you know. That's interesting. Because there would be, 
if you read them clearly, it would be an assumption to then say the other ones don't have free will. Going off the verses. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that. So what was being discussed before? Like if the angels like defied God, right? That was the disagreement? Uh, Yeah, we were just discussing that, like uh, our different understanding. Yeah, so the... actually it's possible because Allah doesn't say, only says that the angels of hellfire, and that makes sense, right? You wouldn't want the angels of hellfire having free will. The angels of hellfire have to obey God. That's why Allah says it like that. Okay, well, uh, Juma is concluded. We're done for today, I guess. Or unless if you guys have any questions, uh, is, you know, if you guys want to walk away, walk away. But this, this person. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave and go to sleep. But I, I love that that question, by the way, at the end. And I will come back to you on, on the angel. So I think there's a little bit of a, an extra extra work that needs to be done. Thank you for that. A uh, little bit of homework there to find out what, what the angels are up to. Um, because now you've, you've, you've intrigued me. Nice. Look at that. Thank you. Everyone, thank you. Have a lovely evening. Peace. Until next time. Uh, thank you. Cool. Salam alaikum. Salam. Salam. Peace. Salam. All right. Any other question, comment before I jump to Clubhouse? I mean, Warhouse. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Let's know. go, boy. <laughs> World War <laughs> Three. <laughs> For the city ads. Oh, oh I mean. No.